Hello, hello. Let's get this started just a couple minutes early because I want to make sure that I can see you guys out there. I'm just uh, trying to pull you guys up on my screen here. Uh, I am finally moved into my desk here. Give me a second. I forgot to put up my secondary screen. Oops, and of course I turn out my light in the process. That's fabulous. Okay. Oh, as I can't see your comments. There we are. Okay. There we go. Howdy, howdy. Oh, <laughs> and my light is covering. There we go. That's a little better. Okay. We're going to have fun with glitter paste today. Um, there's all kinds on the market. Um, I was trying to get my hands on some of Simon Hurley's stuff, but couldn't get my hands on it. So we're going to play with some of this stuff here. This is Paper Glitz by Picket Fence. And uh, I'm a metallic girl, so <laughs> I had to get silver bells. And this one is Golden Sparkle. Very cool. We have Stickles Moon Dust Glitter Gel and Nouveau Glimmer. This is Moonshine, I believe. Or Moonstone, sorry. So we're going to be playing with some of this stuff and how you can use it. And uh, let's get started. So the one thing that you have to be careful of is consistency. So I wanted to show you these two. These are the same product, but the consistency is very, very different. I've actually had this container open all night, hoping to get rid of some of the moisture out of it, and it doesn't really seem to have worked. So you have to make sure with your glitter paste that it's a little bit more solid this is too, a little bit too liquidy and is more than likely going to, if you're going to use it with stencils, it's going to seep underneath that stencil. So just be aware. Um, I may contact the uh, picket fences and just see if there's a way I can thicken it without contaminating it too much. Um, so this is more the consistency that you want here. Uh, let's see, I'm just going to bring in just an end of the paintbrush here. See how it's like quite thick and jelly, jelly like that's what you want for consistency. Okay. It's a lot thicker. It has a body to it. Okay. We're going to be using a lot of cleanup tools today. <laughs> um, the key thing with using glitter gel is any tools that you use, whether it be spatulas or plastic tools or anything that you want to reuse again, stencils, stuff like that, you have to clean them pretty quickly after you use them because you don't want stuff to dry on top. Okay. Um, I highly recommend the Nouveau spatulas. They come in a package of two. They are really inexpensive. And they have a lifespan um, like no other. So there are um, more spatula-like things. Like this one's actually broke. Um, I don't like these ones because they become too brittle. Um, it's a hardened plastic, whereas this is a silicone-based. Um, if you're going to invest in them, invest in the silicone stuff because it's going to last a heck of a long longer. Like, as I said before, this one's actually broken because it became too brittle. And, um, you know, why buy stuff if it's going to break, right? Okay. So, we're going to talk a little bit about how you can use it um, in your crafting. So, we're going to bring in some Prism Studio Paper. This is delicious cardstock. Not sure how to say this name. Opportunia? <laughs> And I'm just going to cut off just a couple of strips here. And we're going to talk about how you can use this. Hello, Beth. Hello, Melissa. 
Is it rainy? <laughs> that kind of sucks. Out on the East Coast. Yeah, we actually, I think we skipped um, spring altogether here in Medicine Hat, Alberta. Hello, Kimberly. Um, because we jumped from like 2 degrees to like 30. And I'm not kidding. It was like 29 degrees yesterday. Um, so we just forgo the spring apparently. So when using cardstock, you can always take your glitter paste and make your own colored kind of glittered cardstock. So you can take your spatula or whatever tool you have and you have now a green undertone to your gold paper. So you can make your own glittered paper. And of course you can go white or you could go um, any kind of color. You could try black. That would look really cool. And then you can cut out pieces of it. You can die cut it. Um, kind of use it however you would use a glitter paper. But you've made it your own. Because, I mean, is there going to be a green undertoned gold glitter paper on the market? Probably not. So you can definitely make your own paper to cut, die cut out of. So just slather it on. It doesn't have to be really thick. Um, actually, the thin one works really well for this. So I'm just putting on a thin layer, and you'll just always have an undertone of whatever color cardstock you have. Like I said, you want to make sure that you clean off your tools. Okay, because this stuff does not does not like to wash off after a period of time. So make sure that you have something to clean your tools off. So try cardstock. Okay, you can make your own glitter cardstock. Um, of course, there's always the tried and true. The good old use it with your stencils, right? So this is the Forever Maple. A stencil from Catherine Pooler. It is also in the shop. And of course, you can absolutely use your stencils with this product. It's nice and thick. Make sure your consistency is appropriate. Like I said, this one is a little runny. Not quite the consistency that you want, and I'll show you why. So we'll, and you can blend these. The spatula is nice because it's very flexible very washable and you can get you can scrape off the top of this really really well so you're going to go over whatever you could try even pattern paper um try all the things so what i'm going to do and i'm not sure if this is going to work because i like i said i was trying to thicken this up i left the container open all night and i'm not 100 percent sure if this is thick enough now to not go under a stencil. So you can fade from one color to the next. Just know that you don't want to cross contaminate your containers. So just be aware you may have to clean your tool between um, grabbing more product. But you can try it. It'd be really cool with colors too. Like you could start with a yellow and then go to a red and you get an orange in between. That would be cool. So I am just using paper towel because it's easy cleanup. All right. So the other thing I wanted to show you, and you can do this at your desk. I do not have a water source in the basement in my new craft area. Yeah, that's not bad. It's not bad. There's a little bit of leakage there, but again, it's consistency. Okay, so play around with your stencils and don't forget you can shade over, use multiple colors. Okay, let's get this stuff off of my work surface here. This is a kind of way that you can make sure that you've got a cleaning spot in your crafty area. All of this is like a, I think it's an 8 by 8 And so it fits my 6 by 6 stencils really easily. And I put just a teeny tiny drop of like Dawn detergent. And I always use a nail brush. I just make sure that my stencil is not like super detailed to do this. And always make sure that you do the backside as well. 
because stuff does seep underneath. Just make sure that your stencil is flat to that surface. Okay. And you can, <laughs> you can blow bubbles through this thing. <laughs> it's got um, soap in those voids. And then of course, just bring in rag tatty old um, towel. And I just pat it dry. So it's one way to keep um, a water source or a cleaning source. And the other thing too is if you drop it, drop it in that pan, like you don't necessarily um, don't have time to scrub it right away, just drop it in the pan, leave it in the pan. Okay? There. And you got a clean stencil ready to go. Well, as clean as you scrub it anyway. <laughs> okay, so it's just off to the side here. So that makes for easy peasy lemon squeezy. So I wanted to show you that not only cardstock, I want you to think outside the box. Why not use clear acetate? Okay. So I'm just going to grab a piece of clear acetate. Now this is a nice heavy duty. So it's it's got some heft to it. And this is always nice for for card making if it's got a little heft to it. Okay, I'm just going to cut off a slice. I'm going to bring in a piece of white printer paper cuz this is going to be a little messy. Okay. So I'm just going to tack this down temporarily. Okay? Again, you can probably barely see this right so this is where you can also have fun with your stencils i'm just looking for the logo to make sure that this is the right side and i'm thinking it's on the there it is okay so again we need a little bit more tape try acetate okay we're gonna try the Nouveau Glimmer Moonstone. I love clear glitter. Love, 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 100% love. So again, make sure your consistency is good. The other thing, and I forgot to grab it, it's upstairs in the kitchen. Um, once you open a container, it is wise to kind of seal it up. And I use... Um, I think it's Procter and Gamble. Um, what's the name of the product? Press and Seal. So it's kind of like this sticky, frosted um, stuff, and you just cut yourself a little square and put it over top, and then put your lid on. Just make sure that there's no crusties around the lid, and it will help seal that material so it lasts longer. Because we've all had containers of, like, you've used once or twice, you put them away, and then you come back to them and they're like, oh, it's like <laughs> rock hard. And that's the last thing you want to do is waste product, right? So put a little press and seal between the top and your lid, and you will be surprised that that product will then last you, you know, two or three or more times longer. And press and seal is like couple of bucks for a, a whole entire roll um it's funny because my husband has these like bolt bins they're about yay big and they they hold bolts and they go on like a system that hangs on his wall and <laughs> the last time we moved i'm like let's cover them with a press and seal and it just means all the bolts didn't fall out of these, of these open, like, kind of boxes. So, yeah. So, the next time you want to do, like, a clear part of your card, um, try some glitter gel. I love the clear. So, I did one yesterday. And this one is, of course, dry now. And I thought this would make a really kind of cool card front. So you could absolutely do like a more opaque color. This would be really cool with the gold. Um, but try it on clear acetate because that's really cool. Um, do you guys have any questions about this stuff? So I was also experimenting. So this was yesterday's experiment with just white cardstock. 
So now that it's dry, like say you don't have um, silver cardstock. Well, if you've got silver glitter paste, just make your own silver cardstock. You could do it as big or as small as possible and just make your own. I mean, mind you, you're going to have to wait a little bit. Um, I don't recommend that you use a heat tool to dry this stuff. It does bubble. Um, but you can make your own colored cardstock. Again, try clear. Try it on colored. This one is, happens to be blue. I even tried some pink. Like, that's really cool. You could cut some uh, die cut flowers out of that. That would be really neat. Um, and of course, don't forget about your little old tags. Um, I had fun with this one. That silver glitter is really cool. It's just a baby tag. So the next time you want to pull out your glitter paste, um, yeah, lots of ideas. And this is a really cool one. So I have metallic papers, metallic cardstocks, and I basically did a tone on tone. So hopefully you can kind of see that when I move it around the light, but it's like a silver on silver. So it looks really cool. Yeah. So you could do gold on gold. You can even do clear on a metallic, which would be really cool because all you would see was basically the texture. So you can have fun with that. Yeah. Uh, yes, it does take a little bit of cleanup, so you have to be prepared for that. But, you know, that's okay. You know, it's just like getting inky, right? Um, you get inky for the sake because you love what you do. And uh, the silicone, yes. They come in a package of two, Kimberly. So you get both of these in the same package. And I, it's not that expensive at all. So if you want a couple extra, buy two. Like, I've had these for years, probably close to 8 to 10 years, and they're still flexible, washable, um, and I love them. So if you're going to invest in them, 100%. These are the ones I recommend for sure. Um, do you guys have any more questions at all? Um, you can also work on, uh, like, a silicone mat, too. Uh, like... Tim Holtz has these. You could definitely work on this because I think eventually once it dries, you could technically peel it off because I don't think it would stick. But of course, this surface is going to allow you to wipe it off really easily too. So keep that in mind when you're working with this product. Um, work on a surface that's going to play nice with it, right? Um, not sure what else. I just wanted to kind of show you some ideas. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. It's a quick one, a short one today. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comment section below and just tag me. I'm, I'll also put a link to some of the stuff that I've used today too. So that so if you guys would like to look at it or purchase it, then you can do that too. This one is cool. Like, I just love this. <laughs> There's something about glitter and, and clear acetate. Awesome. Thanks again for joining me today. Thank you, Beth. That's very much appreciated. And I will hopefully see you on Sunday. Come and join me. And I have no idea what I'm doing, but we're going to have some fun. Thanks, guys. I will see you later. Bye now. Snowflakes. Yes, Beth. I actually was looking for one and I couldn't find my snowflake. <laughs> but yeah, maybe next time, eh? All right. Bye, guys.